They jumped up at the same time and found each other right in front of them. However, when they jumped again, they were 100 meters apart. The sister looked shocked. The brother was also confused. He hurriedly ran to his sister. While running, the brother shouted his sister's name. Hearing his sister's voice, the brother ran even faster. Suddenly, he accidentally fell into the mud. When he got up, he found a dog that had been dead for a long time. The brother was shocked. At that moment, the voice of his sister came from the distance. She asked whether to find the boy first or rendezvous. Hearing this, Carl remembered the purpose of coming in. They were passing by and came in when they heard a boy crying for help in the grass. However, after they came in, they found the bush very strange. Carl was just in front of sight, but in an instant he disappeared. They could hear each other's voices, but no matter what they could not come together. They walked into the night like this. Becky couldn't walk anymore and she was ready to take a break. At that moment, a man came out in front of her. This made Becky instantly alert. The man said he was the father of the boy they were looking for. His name was Simon and he had already gone out. But his wife and son were still inside and he came back in to look for them. Simon told Becky to follow him. He knew the way out and could lead her to her brother. Becky felt that Simon was not a good person, but in order to find her brother, she chose to follow Simon. Simon seemed to be familiar with the grass, and he took Becky through it, but not far away. Becky found a backpack. There were a few pill bottles scattered on the ground, and a handful of bloodied hair next to them. Becky realized that the situation is not good. However, when Becky looked up, Simon was gone. She called out several times. But no one answered. She started calling for her brother again, but no one answered either. Suddenly, a figure appeared in front of Becky. At the same time, Carl was calling out Becky's name, but no one answered. Just when Carl was helpless, a boy suddenly appeared. The boy's name was Tobin. It was because of his cry for help that they came in. Carl asked Tobin if he had lured them in on purpose. Tobin gave a negative answer, like them. Tobin came in with his dog after hearing a man's cry for help. Tobin told Carl that only dead things could not move in this grass. Tobin also said that there was a strange stone here, and that by touching it with the hand one could find the person he was looking for. Carl wanted to find his sister, so he asked Tobin to take him to the stone. Soon they found the stone. The stone seemed to contain some kind of power. It had many strange patterns carved on it. Carl stepped forward and unconsciously reached out his hand. However, just as he was about to touch the stone, he heard his sister's screams. The sound brought Carl back to his senses. He hurriedly ran towards the direction of the sound. Tobin warned behind him that Becky would not be found in this way. But Carl didn't hear him. He searched the bushes all night again. He still didn't find Becky. The next day, Becky's boyfriend searched for them along the way. He found their car near the church. However, the car was dusty, as if it had been abandoned here for a long time. On the edge of the grass, the boyfriend found Becky's book and he walked in directly. The boyfriend was smarter. To prevent disorientation, he tied a knot with grass every time he walked a little way. But when he left, the knot untied itself. Eventually, the boyfriend also lost in the grass. At night, the boyfriend was resting in the grass, and suddenly there was a sound behind him. He went up to check but nothing was there. However, just as he turned around, Tobin suddenly appeared. The boyfriend was shocked and said he didn't know Tobin. Tobin was also confused because they had met an hour ago. Tobin said his name Haas, and that Haas was looking for Becky and Carl. Haas was confused about this. He asked Tobin several questions, but Tobin only answered one. Tobin knew Becky's location. Haas followed Tobin through the grass and soon found Becky. But by now Becky was already a dry corpse. Haas grieved by the corpse for a long time. When he recovered, he found that Tobin had disappeared. In this way, Haas spent the night by Becky's side. The next morning, he picked up Becky's necklace and left the place. The lost Haas was walking in the grass. Suddenly, he heard someone talking in the distance. He hurriedly called out, hoping that someone in the distance could help him. But the voice he heard was Tobin's. Tobin was standing outside the bushes. He was wearing clean and neat clothes, as if he had never been in the grass before. Tobin heard his name called out by someone inside. He was confused and called his mother. While his mother and Tobin were confused, Tobin's dog ran towards the bush. Tobin followed the dog in, followed by his parents. The family got lost in the bushes. They called out each other's names, but they could only hear each other's voices, but could not find each other. Outside the bushes, Becky was passing by. She heard a boy screaming for help, so she and Carl went in. In the bush were Huss, Tobin, his parents, Carl and Becky. There were six people in all. They could hear each other in the bushes, but none of them could find the others. Tobin found the dead dog. Because in the bushes, dead things couldn't move? Haas told Tobin to keep talking and the others moved towards his position. It didn't take long for the four of them to get together. But Tobin's parents were nowhere to be found. They figured out a way to get out. 
Tobin Saturday on Haas' shoulders. In this way, he could see all around them. There was a church in the distance, and all they had to do was keep walking towards it. They walked into the night. Becky's stomach suddenly hurt. Everyone else came over to check on her. At that moment, Tobin's father suddenly appeared. He pushed Haas and Carl away and started to resuscitate Becky. Soon, Becky woke up. At this time, Carl and Becky seemed to have never seen Simon. Because he saved Becky's life, they all trusted Simon. Simon said he knew the way out and led them through the grass. They walked until the evening when they reached their destination. Simon brought them to the rock, and he put his hand on the rock. He said that if they put their hands on it, they would know the way out. Carl believed him and slowly put his hand on the rock. Suddenly Tobin's mother appeared. She stopped Carl. She said that Simon was a liar and that he had deceived everyone. Her words angered Simon and he grabbed Tobin's mother and killed her. The others were scared and ran away. In the panic, they got separated. Carl was the first to be discovered by Simon. Simon knew every way around here, so he quickly caught Carl. Struggling, Carl found a dead version of himself next to him. Carl was terrified and struggled desperately, but he was no match for Simon, and there were many more dead Carls not far away. It was clear that they were caught in a deadly cycle. Becky fell in the mud and water. She couldn't run anymore. By the time Haas found her, she was dead. A heartbroken Haas stayed by Becky's side. Suddenly Tobin came out. He told Haas in horror that Simon would keep killing them and would not stop. Haas looked at Becky and then at the boulder. Tobin sensed what he was thinking and tried to stop it. But Haas had already made up his mind. Now the only way out was to touch the boulder. With the fall of his palm, Haas instantly knew all the roots of the grass. He pulled Tobin through the grass. It wasn't long before Haas stopped. He said he couldn't get out and gave Tobin Becky's necklace. Then he picked up Tobin and sent him out. Tobin opened the door and found Becky's car parked on the edge of the bushes. Tobin's cries for help came from the bushes. Tobin rushed over to stop Becky from entering the bushes. Carl and Becky were in disbelief. The voice inside the bush was the same as the boy's voice in front of them. Carl went to the edge of the bushes to see what was going on. To stop him from going in, Tobin hurriedly took out Becky's necklace. It was made by Haas. So there was no way, it could be exactly the same. Becky believed the boy's words. They got into the car. Becky didn't want to move on, and decided to take the boy back the way they came. They drove away from the place, and all this was watched by Haas. Haas smiled with satisfaction, although he could never get out of here again, but he had no regrets about getting his loved ones back.